What is carbon-14? Okay, carbon-14 dating. Oh, an old-school classic. So I get this one a lot, right? Because you hear this all the time, especially in archaeology, right? This idea of how do you date a site? How do you know how old something is? Now, there's many ways to get to that, but I would say the most kind of famous one that goes with most archaeology sites is carbon-14 dating. So what is this? How does it work? Okay, carbon-14 itself is in everything living, right? It, it's based on that the carbon-14 molecule is an isotope. What is an isotope? An isotope is an unstable example of a stable element. Like carbon-12 is regular carbon, right? It's got six neutrons, it's got six protons, stable. It's uh, element number is six. Carbon-14 has two extra neutrons. So what happens with carbon-14 is it falls apart over time, right? It, it breaks down back into its natural state of carbon-12. The key with this whole thing is that we can measure how long it takes to break down. And the breakdown only starts after something dies. So every living thing on Earth you, me, the grass outside and the trees, all living things, you can think of it as we all have 100% of our carbon-14. Now, in our bodies, we might have, you know, a million carbon-12 atoms for every one carbon-14 one, right? Carbon-14 is going to kind of be rare, but all living things got it. And we stay at 100% until we die. So as an example, I might be doing this video right now. Oh, I'm talking to you. But then as soon as I leave, let's say I go outside and I die today, the day of my death. Sad. But as soon as I die, the carbon-14 starts to degrade. And its rate is 5,730 years per half-life. So we say the half-life of carbon-14 5,730 years. What that means is 5,730 years from now, today, the day of my death, I will have half as much carbon-14 as I did when I was alive. Now, you go another 5,730 years from now, how much carbon-14 do I have then? A quarter. That's how it goes down, right? It doesn't go down straight like this. It's got that like geometric style to it. So every 5,730 years, you have it again. So it's like all, half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, and so on. So the question is, when do we run out of carbon-14? The answer, never. It just gets too little to measure. And when is that too little to measure time? It's around like 60,000 years or something like that. So what I'm saying here is that we can measure how old something is anywhere from like eh, two or 300 years old all the way back to about 60,000 years old. And then it gets too little and you can't really tell anymore. So of course with those numbers, you're not going to be measuring the age of dinosaurs or something like that. We use other methods for that. And one of the many things I really love about carbon-14 is just in the teaching of it, it's very typical because it works really well in certain, certain circumstances and it doesn't in others, which is fine. That's cool. We want to use it for its strengths. So we're going to date something that was once alive. And, and what is something that was once alive, right? A bone, um, a piece of shell, a uh, seed, right? Anything like that that's still around at the archaeology site. We cannot date a rock. So any kind of stone tool, you can't, can't do it. You're going to have to date that using other methods. But again, I've used carbon-14, you guys, like a lot. And I've been really happy with it. 
One of the other downsides is whatever you send away to the lab to be dated, that piece is going to be destroyed, obliterated, because they have to burn it up in the process of getting out the carbon-14 to figure out how much is still in there, right? So if you send a little piece of shell, gone. So I'll send samples, you know, little bits of bone, little shell, whatever. And then I send it off to the lab, and then what I get back in like, I don't know, three weeks or a month, I just get basically an Excel spreadsheet that shows how old the stuff was. But I'm telling you, it's, it really is like magic. It's amazing. The first time I sent the stuff away and I got my spreadsheet back, I was like, damn, hey, this is great, right? It will not date to the day. There's always like a little range, like um, something typical, you'll get something back and it'll say it's like 2000 years old, plus or minus 40 years. So you get a, a range, right? And that's because of things like the carbon-14 in the atmosphere varies a tiny bit over time. There's little more technical aspects of it that make it so it's not to the day. But I will say too, I've seen carbon-14 be used long enough where they've been able to narrow that range a little bit just with, with more modern technology and that kind of stuff. I'm not here to say they'll ever, ever narrow it like to the day or something. I don't see that happening. but it is cool that like, hey, if you were carbon-14 dating something 30 years ago, you might get a range of like, oh, plus or minus 120 years. Now it's like, hey, plus or minus 35. It depends on how old the thing is in the first place. You know, is it is it 30,000 years old or is it a uh, 1,000 years old, right? That's gonna matter. But overall, carbon-14 is just like a fantastic tool for us to use in archeology, span very common on archeology span sites, because let's be honest, most of the places we work in are from only a couple hundred years old to about, you know, 10,000 years old or something like that. So it's our main way of, of dating something, barring other methods that are a bit more guesswork, but good, something like stratigraphy or something like that. But with that said, Two thumbs up for carbon-14. It's a, it's a fantastic, straightforward, reliable way of dating something. My last bit on this is, again, sometimes people go, oh, are you sure? Did it work? What about the sampling process? It's possible, I guess, to get a bad sample, but the chances, you guys, are so low, right? Um, I've found the opposite thing to happen which is you'll get a carbon-14 date back and you won't believe it because you're expecting something else. I totally did this. <laughs> I was expecting something to be a thousand years old. I got the date back and it was like 320 years old, plus or minus 25 years. And I was like, what? My sample must be wrong. I sent another from the exact same spot, 336 years old, plus or minus 21 years. I'm like, what? No way. I sent like a third sample and it's like, 342 years old, plus or minus 26 years. And then, you know, I do like to brag that I have a big PhD and I'm like really smart and stuff, but it took me three tries before I was like, hey idiot, the carbon 14 dates are right. This part of the site is 350 years old. It's not a thousand years old. So, Trust your carbon-14 dates.